Hello, 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 y bendición. Welcome to Pero Who Am I? A podcast about self-discovery and the life of a modern-day Latina with your host, Lisa Marie. So this week's Spanish lesson of the day or Spanish lesson of the week is going to be how to make a limbe de coco. So for many of you that don't know what a limbe de coco is, it's kind of like an ice pop but it's made in a like a little five ounce, eight ounce cup. It's made with coconut milk. You can use all kinds of other flavors. Um, but growing up, my grandmother used to make this for us all the time. And if grandma didn't make any, the vecinita always had some on the corner. Um, you always knew which neighbor's house to knock on because she was selling them for a quarter, 50 cents, even though I think prices have gone up. Um, last time I was back home in Jersey, they were like a dollar, but I would still spend the money to get it because there's nothing like a traditional cup of limbe de coco. Okay, so making this is actually fairly easy. What you want is you want a can of evaporated milk. You want a can of coconut milk, one can of cream of coconut, vanilla extract, half a cup of water, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, you're going to mix this all together in a large bowl. You want to make sure that all the ingredients mix very well. You're going to place some cups on a cookie sheet. You can use either the 8-ounce or 9-ounce disposable uh, solo cups. You're going to pour your mixture into each of the cups and make sure that every everything is even so that the kids don't try and complain that one has more than the other because that's the ones I used to always go for, el que tenía más. Um, and then you're going to freeze the limbes for about six to eight hours. Sometimes you want to leave them overnight. And then when you're ready to enjoy them, you're going to pop them out of the cup. And if you do it traditionally, you flip the limbe out of the cup so that you're eating the bottom first. Because that's where the most flavor is probably going to settle all the sweet, sugary part of it. So with that, go ahead and enjoy your limbe de coco. All right, friends, so today I am joined with Andy Diamond of Andy Diamond Photography, and we're going to talk a couple issues that I personally have, and I know that a lot of women out there, um, they go through as well, and it's going to be a lot of self-esteem. Um, Andy Diamond does these awesome boudoir photos, and I sat and had a consultation with her, and just sitting there made me want to definitely do this, and I intend to. So I wanted to bring her on today so that we can kind of go over some of the things that prevent women from embodying themselves and loving who they are and the person that they see in the mirror. Um, Andy, if you want to go ahead and say hello and introduce yourself. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honored. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So... so Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, so like you said, so I'm, I'm Andy Diamond. I own a boutique style portrait studio in Tampa, Florida called Andy Diamond Photography. And I photograph a few different genres, but overall my basic goal is to photograph women and to help them feel beautiful and comfortable in their own skin, whatever that means to them. Right, right. And that I, I've learned that it means a lot to everyone. Um, and something different to everyone, too. Correct, correct. So one of the things that, you know, growing up, I was always a very skinny girl. And I got teased for being super skinny. Then had kids, and now I'm out of my sisters. I'm the overweight one. And, I, you know, I don't see myself as obese or anything, but I do have that mom pudge. I do have a couple pounds I could lose. So now I'm the opposite spectrum. So I'm the overweight you're never, one. So. You're never going to make everybody happy. Just At all. <laughs> So one of my sisters had a family friend with, of her on her side that um, would call me the fat one. And she, you know, she'd refer to her sister and she'd be like, yeah, my sister Lisa. And they'd be like, oh, the fat one. And she's like, no, my sister Lisa. Sister Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's always been one of those self, you know, I've had really so low self-esteem and, you know, it comes, I, I know it comes from past, the past, you know, constantly trying to live up to, what everybody thought was the perfect woman and you know who you're supposed to be you're not skinny enough you're not fat enough you need a little bit more meat on your bones and that's always caused me when i look in the mirror like i'm constantly picking on myself now 
Yeah, I understand. So one of the things that you do with your boudoir photos that is you you kind of help us realize how sexy we can be and how beautiful because it's not all you know it's not all sexual it can be not just at all beautiful right um and really it's not it's not sexual it's sexy but it's not sexual at all correct correct so i noticed that recently on your um on your facebook page you had posted about how it's not only for women who are in relationships because that's one of the things that um, one of my followers said is that, you know, I don't have a husband. I don't have a boyfriend. Why would I do the pictures? Sure. Yeah. So I would say probably, probably a solid 50% of my clients who do boudoir shoots are not in a relationship. They're, they don't have a boyfriend. They don't have a fiance. They don't have a husband. And even for my clients who are in a relationship, one of the first things that I say to women when they come in for their consultation is, while I understand and appreciate that your initial motivation may have been to book a session like this so that you can gift it to a significant other, my main goal for you is for you to walk out of this session feeling beautiful and empowered and just comfortable and confident in the skin that you're in. So if we go through the whole experience together and you end up with a gorgeous album at the end, but you don't walk away from it feeling better about yourself, then I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I want women to feel great about it and for it to give them a confidence boost. And, or, or if they're already confident, I want it to, you know, just further enhance their, their self positivity. And then if they want to share that with somebody, great, but you're not going to feel good about sharing something with someone if you didn't enjoy doing it and it, you didn't feel great about yourself. Right. Right. Yeah. And I definitely, you know, because I, I, like I said, I sat with you during your consultation and I looked at some of your work and portfolio and it was like, if she could make me look like that, I would absolutely love this, you know, and, and I initially did it because I wanted to give it as a gift to at the time he was my boyfriend and now fiance, but more and more so I'm like, I, I want to do it for me. Right. I want to do it for myself, not for him. And so one of the things is that, you know, overcoming insecurities during these sessions, what yeah. are your, your advice for, you know, cause you know, people are, we've got moms out there. We've got, um, women of color who have different skin tones and, you know, the dark spots on even skin tones. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for them? You know, it's funny. A, a girl in my, my private Facebook group the other day, one of my clients actually posted something. And I think it kind of goes along the lines of what it is that you're saying. And she said, how to have a bikini body, buy a bikini, put it on your body. Yes. <laughs> and she got so many comments on that all positive because it's true. Like mm -hmm. this, this session does tend to be really therapeutic for a lot of my clients but a lot of it is just kind of taking that initial first step and kind of taking a leap. And you're, you're, you're putting your faith in me, right? Because you don't know me, which is part of the reason why we do our consultation. Part of the reason why I have women in my Facebook group talk about their experience so that hopefully it can give them a little bit of peace and comfort because again, they don't necessarily know me personally. Um, but we first have a consultation and I talk to my clients at length about you know, what do you love about yourself? What do you feel maybe a little bit insecure about? Um, let's pick out outfits that are going to highlight the parts of you that you love. So that way you're feeling really good about it. And I tell women, you know, put on your outfits at home, stand in front of the mirror and ask yourself, do I like this? Do I feel good about this? And if the answer is no, maybe that's not the best outfit to bring with you. But if you know, you're already really, really hard on yourself Maybe you bring it anyway, because the whole point is I'm going to maybe push you out of your comfort zone a little bit. So a lot of it is a leap of faith. Um, and then a lot of it is also just knowing that I photograph women of all ages, sizes, races, ethnicities, beliefs. Um, so I think it's just, again, having that faith to know that I'm on your side. I'm, I'm your teammate throughout this whole process. I'm helping strap you in or, 
you know, lace you up. We're laughing. We're dancing around. We're listening to music. You can have a cocktail if you want. I won't. I'll stay. I'll stay very sober. <laughs> I'll um, need a couple. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of a lot of my women do. And once they get started, they realize like it's it's fun. Like I said, it's sexy. It's not sexual. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I photographed women who were size zero. I photographed women who were size twenty four, and everywhere in between. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that the size zero women have just as many insecurities about their bodies as the women who are size 24. And I think that kind of goes back to what you were saying about you got picked on when you were the skinny kid and you get picked on when you're a little bit curvier. And that mm-hmm. just, that, that says a lot about our society. And um, I really would like to help break that mold because myself as well, like there's parts of my body that I don't love. And there's parts that I wish were different. And, and the more I do this and I have a daughter also, you mm-hmm. know, I remind myself that your, your weight doesn't define your worth. It just doesn't. I like that. And it's, it's very true. I mean, I know that um, I have boys, so I try to sit there and tell them, you know, all women are beautiful. They're just different. You know, there's not a specific mold. Um, I've noticed that my kid, my boys tend to lean towards, you know, they're not about, what's the word I want to use? They're not about appearances. They, they definitely see, cause a lot of their friendships is, you know, they get their friends together. I'm like, it's everybody. Like there is no specific race. There's no specific ethnicity. Like, you know, they've got boys, they've got girls in the group. And I'm noticing, I'm like, so why are you friends with them? Oh, they make me laugh or because they're fun to be around. Funny, that, yeah. that makes me feel really good that they're not looking at just what's on the outside. They're actually right. looking at the person's personality. And I think kids are so much better about that than we are as adults. Absolutely. Right. The kids will invite anybody into their circle. And I think especially women, we don't, right. you know, and it's, it's, it's unnecessary. And, and look, I tell, I tell my kids, you're not going to be friends with everybody. I don't expect you to be friends with everybody, but I do expect you to be kind to Mm -hmm. everybody until somebody, you know, makes it to the point where they don't deserve your kindness. But otherwise I expect you to be kind. And, you know, when I'm, when I'm editing after a session, my daughter will come into my office and she'll look at the women that I photographed. And again, all different shapes and sizes and colors, and she'll go, oh, mommy, she's so pretty, or I love her hair, or she's never once come in and said, oh, she's fat. Mm-hmm. She, I just, I don't think that she would do that. And, and I know as she gets older, society is going to tell her what fat is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I'm going to work really hard to make sure that that's not who she is and that she doesn't look at people and define them by what their, what their body looks like. Yeah, I I think like as teenagers, it gets harder because that's sure. when your body starts. Nine, but yeah, <laughs> you're right. Mm-hmm. With teenagers, it's going to get harder. I have, um, I, I don't want to call her out, but I know someone who has some body issues and she posted recently that what she's going through in life re- is because of her body issues. And sure. there were so many, you know, so many of us that got on and was like, look, you know, we're 34, 35 you know, someone got on there was like, I'm 50 and I have these same issues at this age that you're having now. It's going to, it's a part of life. You just learn to love yourself and screw what everybody else thinks. Right. That's, that's what it is. Like, like I said, how to get a bikini body, buy a bikini, put it on your body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love that. I think I'm going to, I know exactly which one I'm going to copy that and put it on my and wall. I'll, and, and I'll tell you, and, and she wouldn't mind me sharing this at all. She was, she's definitely a curvy girl by mm-hmm. her own, you know, uh, admissions, I guess you'd say. Um, and she, she had such confidence and rocked her shoot so hard. And it was so awesome to see that. And I think that confidence just kind of translates into the rest of her life too, mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. And and so, like I said, consequently, she totally rocked her shoot because she wasn't like, oh, you're going to see my, my this role or my that role or my cellulite. Look, we all have roles. We all have cellulite. Again, size, ladies who are size zero have, have cellulite. Ladies who are size 24 have cellulite. And it's just, 
cellulite is supposed to, or, or fat is supposed to protect your organs, right? Granted, right. I know we don't all want it on our ass, but, <laughs> but it is what it is. <laughs> right. It's, it's there. I mean, my issues are my thighs. Like, you know, I'm like, I, I'm sure I could tone down everything else, but my thighs are my thighs and hips. I'm Hispanic. They're going to be there. <laughs> yep. So I, what's the oldest age you've ever ph photographed? Photographed one of my favorite clients who you've probably seen in my group is my girl, Tammy. And she's 69. Wow. Yeah. And she's been married for like 35, 40 years and mm -hmm. just rocked her session. I mean, we had so much fun. We laughed. And that, I mean, I obviously benefit a lot from, from doing this as well because it's a huge, um, you know, I, I feed off of my clients' energy. So we just laughed and had so much fun. And yeah, she was, I mean, she's knocking on seventies door and she did it and she was sexy as hell. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. So what do you, what would you, advice would you give for women who are in that position where they're like, I want to do it, but I don't think I should. Um, I don't feel sexy enough. I don't feel like I'm the, you know, I'm normally the comedian in the group. What mm -hmm. advice would you give that, that woman? I think well, first of all, I think confidence is really sexy. So I don't think you necessarily have to be, again, sexual, like this, like sexual, you know, cat mm -hmm. right? <laughs> to, to, for you to be sexy per se. I think sexiness comes from inside. It comes from, again, your, your own confidence. And maybe you're going into the shoot, not super confident, but I can assure you that you're going to leave confident as hell because we are, like I said, we're laughing as I'm shooting, I'm, I'm looking at what are the aspects of my client that I can, I can tell obviously like what she feels good about and what she feels more self-conscious about. So I'm going to play up the things that are her securities and obviously play down the things that are her insecurities. And I'm going to very authentically find what it is about her that she feels good about and then see the other things that maybe she she has put on herself not to feel good about, but I can see it, right? Because we can never see what other people see. Mm -hmm. on Correct. And I, and I repeatedly throughout a shoot, am going to praise those things um, because I think that's a confidence booster. And I also think that women, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Women can help tear down other women and women can also help build up other women. You know, there's, there, it's one thing when you're walking through a store and some guy walks past you and says something about your outfit and you're like, oh, you know, thanks, whatever. He's probably a creeper. But it's another thing when a woman walks past you, right, and sees your outfit or, or you know, just something about you and she's like, your hair is gorgeous. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you know. Yeah, okay, I just threw this if, together. <laughs> right, right. But if another woman points it out, doesn't that feel a little bit different and a bit more authentic than when a man does? Correct. Not that it does. saying anything, you know, not that it's not flattering, but when another woman says it, I don't know, there's definitely just something a bit more authentic about it. Absolutely. It's that sense of like, I, I see it as that sense of acceptance. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, wow. You know, I just threw it together and she, you know, she praised me for it. Right. Thank you. Right. Kind of makes it worth it at the end. And I try when I'm, you know, in an elevator, obviously it's a little bit weird now with COVID, but right. <laughs> if I'm in an elevator or if I'm just sitting next to somebody, you know, I, I try to always put myself in another person's shoes and you don't know what somebody's going through. So sometimes just a little compliment or just something to build up another woman, like we're all in the same tribe, right? Correct. Um, you don't know what that's going to do for her day. But it's right. not going to, it's not going to diminish your day and it's only going to hopefully give her a little self-esteem boost. And I think with social media and just basically with social media, it's such a platform for people to tear other people down. And I don't know. I just, I, I obviously am really active on social media because it's, it's my business. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I didn't have to be, <laughs> I wouldn't because there's just so much negativity and it's so easy to, to say mean and nasty things when you're hiding behind a computer and you're however many hundreds of miles away from another human being. Correct. But, um, you know, I, I, sorry, I went off on a tangent on that, but <laughs> you know, I think, I think that we can praise each other and, and bring each other up. And sometimes that means just 
you being the initiator too of, of noticing other things on other people and then just saying something, just saying, Hey, I, I love your eyes, you know, without being creepy. Right. (laughs) Don't look at them weird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I, I do definitely think that, um, we need to be more uplifting to others. Um, that one compliment can go a long way. I know that when I was going through, in my eyes, it was a really bad depression. Um, little comments like, Hey, you look good today. Or you look like you've lost some weight. I know I didn't, but the fact that somebody else was like, Hey, you look like you've lost some weight that made me feel really good about myself. So I think, you know, just one little compliment goes a long way. If we were to do that more often to others, especially to women. Just to raise each other up, like, and to teach our kids the same, you know, one of my clients who's also a dear friend has the has such self esteem issues, and her and I have spoken about it, and and she's got daughters, um, and you know I tell her all the time you can't talk about yourself like this, and definitely you can't talk about yourself like this in front of your kids, mm-hmm. you know because they look up to you, they don't see your quote unquote you know fat stomach or, and they don't care, mm-hmm. <laughs> just like just like moms when I'm doing a family portrait session. And they're like, oh, I'm too fat to be in, in the session. It's going to be just my kids. And I always tell them, nope, it's going to be you too, because guess what? And I'm very frank. And I'm like, one day when you're dead, mm-hmm. <laughs> your kids aren't going to look back at their album and say, oh, thank God mom wasn't in this album. She was way too fat. Yep. They're not going to say that. <laughs> they're going to go, where the hell is my mom? You know, Why isn't she in this picture? Why yeah. isn't she in this picture? Oh, because she was too fat. Yep. No. <laughs> No. So especially clients who I know well, and I've been photographing for years, I'm like, "Mm, nope, I don't care how how quote unquote fat you are or how, you know, your, your skin or your hair or whatever other excuse you can give me, you're going to be a part of the family portrait. So and then one of always like okay, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that um I appreciate about your photography is that I've seen in and I'll I'll link your Instagram um into the descri- show description that some of your boudoir photos are not necessarily lingerie. No, but you've got women in button down shirts and thigh yeah. highs, and those are some of my favorite pictures that I like They're to hot. look at. They're very hot. I mean, I love those pictures. And, you know, when I was thinking of my session, I already had in my mind, uh, my fiance has a shirt that has his last name on it that I was like, that's what I want to wear. And it's just a regular t shirt. Right. So it's like, you know, I love that it doesn't necessarily have to be lingerie for it no. to be a very beautiful picture. In fact, we never even start off the session in lingerie. In lingerie. We usually start off the session in like jeans and a sweater or a cute top, um, sometimes a really pretty dress, just something so that you can kind of have a bit of a warm up. Mm -hmm. And and some women don't need that. They're just like, "Mm, let's just get to it, Andy. And I'm like, cool, you know? (laughs) uh, Yeah. And other women honestly don't wear lingerie at all. It's truly Mm -hmm. more of like a glamour type of session. And I say glamour, not meaning like the (laughs) eighties, like glamour (laughs) shots, but I mean more of like, think of like Cosmo or Vogue type of thing where it's, I mean, it's fun. It's fantasy, right? This isn't something that we do on a daily basis. Most of us are are busy working women or moms. um, And so I would imagine for the majority of us, we're not wearing these outfits and getting our hair and makeup done on a daily basis. It's just not real life, right? No, especially Um, not now with COVID. No, no. So, (laughs) So being able to do something where you get to be the center of attention you get to be judged on, you know what I mean? And, and get your hair and makeup done and, and just have a tribe of other women who are, whose goal is to make you feel especially amazing that day. Um, I just think it's pretty awesome. You know, I think it's, like I said, really empowering. And, and I understand that boudoir isn't necessarily for everybody. That's fine. You know, find something else that, that makes you feel good about yourself, whatever that thing may be, mm-hmm. you know? If that means, you know, going for walks every morning, if that means just sitting by yourself and having 10 minutes of meditation, whatever it is, there's things that you can do for yourself that aren't selfish. They're actually quite selfless because if you feel better about yourself and you feel more confident, doesn't that affect your relationship with everybody else in your life? 
right? right. My husband mm-hmm. and I actually sat last night. We did a 10 minute meditation on Peloton. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, it was truly just like sitting and breathing. And, she, you know, most of the times when you're doing some sort of like online meditation or something, they're walking you through an experience, you know, or, right. or through, a, through a practice. And it, we did it right before we went to bed. And I'm like, that was actually really nice. And I, I'm so scatterbrained and, and <laughs> you know, very OCD. I, I can't ever sit still. So it was a nice way to just kind of be Zen and, and sit and be with yourself. And right. I think a lot of women don't take the time to do that or they feel guilty about doing something like that. And we got to get over that. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Like right now I'm in the process of buying a house and, um, I want to get my toes done. And I'm like, well, no, I shouldn't spend that money. And my fiance is like, no, you get need to do done. something for yourself. <laughs> right. So I'm like, okay, do I get my toes done? Do I get a massage? And he's like, well, you got to pick one. He goes, but you need to go do something for go yourself. Do it. So it's like, you know, I'm like, but I just don't want to spend them. Like I've started doing my own nails. I've started limiting, you know, the amount of like extra expenses. And he's like, I understand no. that. Yeah. I understand that, but there's plenty of things that you can do that aren't, you know, money related Mm -hmm. to still show yourself some Mm self-love. And that's really important. And like I said, it may or may not be a boudoir session for people. That's totally fine. It's, it's generally, or, or, you know, it's very much a niche market that isn't everybody's jam and that's cool. That's fine. So one of the hesitations that I, that some of my followers said was the priciness of the boudoir photo shoots. Sure. What are some things that you do to help offset or to kind of help balance the cost for someone who really wants to do it? Yeah, it's definitely an investment. Um, I've had my studio for about 12, 13 years now. So I think the, the pricing that I have is definitely commensurate with the experience that I have and the reputation that I've built for myself and, and the experience that I provide for my clients. So that being said, it may or may not be within everybody's financial wheelhouse. And I completely understand and respect that. Um, And I'm sure different photographers, you know, obviously charge different and do things different ways. For me, one of the things that I have found is clients typically know when they first come and sit with me, okay, I know my shoot's going to be three months from now or, you know, six months from now or whatever it may be. So we kind of look at financially, if it's not something that they can put down whatever chunk of change they're planning on investing. Okay, if we know that your session is four months from now, and this is the collection that you think you want to purchase, I offer prepayment plans, I offer post-session payment plans, I allow people to do cash, check, credit card, firstborn child, whatever. (laughs) I'm not going to make it difficult for people to give me their money. And if it's something that is important, this is what I have found, regardless of whether it's photography or a purse or, you know, an experience that you want, whatever it may be. If somebody wants something bad enough, they're going to find a way to make it happen. If that means they have to give up their $5 coffee every day for X number of days, or they go without getting their toenails painted, you know, Mm -hmm. professionally for a while, and myself included in that, if there's something that I want bad enough, I will find a way to make it happen. So, you know, my clients are the same. If they want to make it happen, they're going to make it happen. And if they need a little help with, again, spreading out their payments or, you know, doing a payment plan, I'm happy to do that for people. I don't, I don't want finances to be the reason why somebody couldn't do this. Um, But I've also learned through the years that I may or may not be for everybody. And, and so for my own self-esteem, I had to wrap my arms around that and be like, that's okay. (laughs) Right. It's okay. If I'm not for everybody, if, if my style isn't for everybody or if my price point isn't for everybody, that's okay. So, so for the women who are listening, if my style or if my price point isn't for you, that's cool. We can still be friends, but find somebody, if, if it is something that you truly want to do, find somebody who matches your desires, interview them, sit with them, have a consultation with them, look at their samples, uh, you know, talk to other women and find out how that photographer made your friend feel Mm -hmm. and then then move forward just go go for it yeah I think that's one of the things that we tend to forget that we're able you know when we're paying for something we can interview that person like you know you this is a huge investment so it's like you want to sit down and make sure that you guys are going to match and um I know that with your sessions I've kind of seen some of your live postings for your beginning when you're setting up and stuff and 
it's a party. So it's a party. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, if you're looking to do boudoir, Andy's definitely the one you want to go look at. Um, she Thank makes you. it fun. And I love listening. You know, you've got them. You had, um, when was it yesterday? You had Whitney Houston playing in the background and that was so much fun. So I'm glad. And it's good to know that you can price it out and kind of spread the pricing out. That makes it definitely easier and a little bit more affordable because you're not feeling like you're spending a couple all of thousand once. dollars all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm going to bring this up because I know you had kind of made a mental list of things that you wanted <laughs> to talk about. And one of the things that I think um, people experience with a boudoir shoot is all the emotions that come along with it from for typically obvious, you know, stemming from past emotional experiences. And so I have found for, for a good chunk of my clients that a boudoir shoot is very much so an emotional experience for them. Um, because we all bring with us our past experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that be something really positive or something really negative. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women, I think also use this session as kind of a therapeutic tool mm -hmm. <laughs> of, of just a, a way that they can grow emotionally. So when I first started, you know, several years ago, I didn't necessarily realize the emotional impact that, that this type of session would have on my clients, but I very quickly was able to discover it because it, it, it is very emotional. And I think clients do have a very emotional response to it, but in a good way. And I love that. And again, selfishly, I love being a part of that because it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I want to feel great about what it is that I do. And I think everybody does. Right. Um, so I love that I get to be a part of that journey for my clients. Um, it's a pretty cool gig. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, it's, you love what you do and that, so that it. makes it not work for you. So it's yeah. not a job. It's something you actually truly love. And you can see that in your pictures that, you know, that's definitely, and your clients, you, everybody raves about you. I love your page. I love being on oh, there you. because everybody's so it's, you've got different types of backgrounds all in one place. Oh, yeah. And there's, you know, on my social media, I see a lot of the politics. I see a lot of the racial tension to go onto your page. is kind of like that little outlet of there's something funny going on. There's somebody funny. boosting someone else. Funny, so I love seeing that. Inappropriate, whatever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you make it fun. <laughs> It should be funny. Like life should be funny. I don't, I definitely don't allow for any political talk in there. Um, everybody, obviously everybody has their own thoughts and feelings about that. And, and you're never going to convince somebody else on social media. Like, have you ever seen somebody post something on social media one way or the other in terms of politics? And then somebody responded and said, you're right. I'm going to change my vote. No, it right, doesn't. No. Happen, so. <laughs> I, I live in a household where we're opposites and we learn to right. just not talk about politics. Right. Oh, my mother and I started getting into it the other night and I was just like, this is, this is pointless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, I have a family group text and everybody's got different opinions and it's like, can we disagree to disagree? It's like, great... you know, it's we're we're entitled to our own opinions. It's okay. Right. Um, especially now with everything going back to school and COVID and it's oh, just God. like, oh my God, stop. <laughs> Sad. It's not good. It is. It's not. It's not. So I, I think we pretty much covered all our topics that I wanted to hit on. Do you have any last words you want to go ahead and include? Um, you know, another question that I get asked quite frequently is, and again, it kind of goes back to, to the whole self-esteem thing is women ask me now you're going to edit this and fix my, this or fix my, that. And I think you and I actually spoke about that at your mm -hmm. consultation. Um, and my answer is, and sometimes it shocks people a little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the reason being, when you ask me if I'm going to fix your, this or fix your, that my response is I'm not fixing anything because you're not broken. So I am going to figure out how to, again, highlight the things that you love about yourself and kind of slightly downplay the things that maybe you don't love as much about yourself. And also show you that I bet you, 
you can learn to love things about you that you may not think that you do. So Mm -hmm. that being said, like if you walk in with a giant zit on the day of your shoot, first of all, my hair and makeup artist is amazing. So she's going (laughs) to make sure that it's covered up really well. Um, But that I would get rid of because that's not a permanent part of your body. I'm not going to change the shape of your body. I'm not going to take away or add something that is or isn't there because then you're going to look back at your artwork and you're going to go, that girl is beautiful. I wish I could look like her. Right. And it's you. What the hell did I just do? (laughs) Right. That again, that just created something that completely negates everything that I'm wanting to do. I want you to love who it is that you are. I want you to love your body for what it is. So if I'm changing the shape of your body into something that it's not, what have I just done for you? Yeah. Giving me another image to look at. Yeah. Now, if in the middle of one of your images, you're doubled over laughing and your head is quirked in a certain way that, you know, it it made a lump under your chin that's not normally there, but you love the emotion and the feeling behind that image, I'll give that a little bit of sculpting because I know that that's not normally there. You just happen to be doubled over laughing. Right. Um, But otherwise I'm not, I'm not changing what your body looks like. I'm just going to pose you and position you and light you in a way that's, that's the most flattering that helps you feel the best about yourself. It's a fine line to walk for sure. Mm -hmm. For me. No, but it's a really good point because I know that that's one of our expectations is that, Hey, we're going to go get a photograph. She's going to edit out the stretch marks and edit out the cellulite, but it's like really, truly that's a part of who you are. Right. I get it. I mean, I definitely get it. Like, everybody wants to look and feel amazing. And I think you can look and feel amazing. And that's part of what all this is about is just body empowerment, whether it be again, me photographing you or somebody else, or, or just taking a picture of yourself in front of the mirror, Mm -hmm. just looking Mm -hmm. at yourself and appreciating what it is that you have and realizing Mm -hmm. that again, going back to what I said in the beginning, your weight doesn't define your worth, Mm -hmm. whether it be because you're super, super tiny or because you're curvy. Who cares? Right. Yeah. Now I have a fellow, I have a fellow podcaster that she is constantly talking about how she takes nudes of herself because she is proud of who she is and she's Robbie proud of her girl. body. Just yeah. Sure, and I'm like, just make sure <laughs> your account isn't, isn't connected right. to a Google account. <laughs> yeah. That's what she says. She's like, it's not a connected to the, any cloud. She goes, it's these are my pictures. The, yeah, to the cloud. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, just her speaking on that and how she takes pictures of herself, you know, it kind of brings into the light of, well, if we start taking pictures of ourselves, then we can definitely allow, you know, a photographer and go into this space where it's supposed to be about empowerment. It's supposed to be about feeling good about yourself. Right. And it's at least the way that I shoot. I'm sure everybody does it a little bit different. I, I joke because obviously I've got a bunch of mom clients. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that I shoot, if your kid was to stumble across your album it's never going to be something that you feel mortified by. Mm -hmm. And that's just me. That's how I shoot. I'm sure there's other photographers who do it differently, but Mm -hmm. I shoot in a way that's very, um, I would say G to PG 13 kind of, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you know, it's not, it is not, um, not to be crass, but it's not like spread Eagle and, all of your innards hanging out. That's not what it is that I'm doing. It's, it's just about form and shape and, and laughter and fun and, and silliness. And, but I think silliness can be sexy too. So it's, again, if you're, if your kid were to stumble across your, your artwork, they're not going to be like, Oh, I mean, now granted, I've got a teenage son also. So he may be like, what the? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but he's also not going to be like, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. It's it's not that, you know? Right. It's just fun. Well, I have teenagers who don't respect boundaries. So if they were to, oh, yeah. you know, open up uh, an album and see pictures, they'll be like, oh, that's just mom posing. That's just mom. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like I've said, we live in a house where it's a very open household. So, mm-hmm. you know, my husband and I will be, walking around naked kids will walk in it's we don't hide our bodies we're not like oh yeah (laughs) you know whatever you're 14 if you walk into the bathroom you probably know what it is that i'm doing in there so be prepared for what you're exactly (laughs) what i tell my kids like you know we don't necessarily walk around naked but i'm like if you walk into my bedroom 
you don't know what you're going to see. <laughs> it's my space. So <laughs> you have your space. I have mine. If you walk right. into mine, you're, you're bound to see whatever you see. Just like if I walk into your room, exactly. I'm going to see whatever I see, but they're more shy, more covered up. Right. But they, they sleep in their underwear. So they'll come out and to breakfast in their underwear. And I'm like, can yeah. we at least get a shirt on? <laughs> so I've, I've told them, I said, if you're not going to wear a shirt, then I'm not going to wear a shirt either. And they're like, all right, mom, we're going to go get a shirt. <laughs> we're going right now, mom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, it's fair. It's fair. Like we're going to have gender neutral here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So no, I really do appreciate that. And I appreciate the, you know, that it's all about body love and self-love for each other. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to link all your information in the show description. So if anybody wants to reach out to Andy Diamond for her boudoir shoots, and like she says, she also does do other genres of photography. Um, she recently did the, your project. I love that project. Now I can't think of the title of it. Oh, um, for when, when, during the Black Lives Matter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that was, was such... that was pretty powerful. That was awesome. And I know that on your Facebook, you have the video of it and everything. So yeah. I'll definitely link that in there. Um, other than that, Andy, I really appreciate you coming on today and talking with us. And I will definitely be booking a session soon, hopefully sooner than Excited. later. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to do it before the wedding, but with the house and everything going on, it might be after the wedding. That's totally fine. My doors are always open. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, ladies, for listening. Thank you. And that's going to bring us to my final segment of the show, to Palabras de las Semanas. And I like to end each week of my show with either a quote or a Bible verse or some words of affirmation, um, things that have helped me along the way that I feel is greatly important. And today's Palabras de la Semana, I think it just radiates perfectly with today's um, topic of, you know, having self-esteem issues, just not feeling pretty even when everyone else tells you that you are, or, you know, just based on what you look at yourself in the mirror, you're just not happy. So this week's Palabras de la Semana is don't compare yourself to others. There's no comparison between the sun and the moon. They each shine when it's their time. And with that, mi gente, that's all I have for you for this week. If you like what you heard on this week's episode, please be sure to take a moment to rate and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You never know. I'm going to start reading some of these reviews on the show and don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're there so that you'll get notified when a new episode drops. 